When someone passes, where do they go? Gone forever, or can they show? What if you could find someone between to bridge the gap of those I'm unseen. Michelle Livingston, and I've been a spiritual medium for the last 30 years, appearing on Fox News, New York. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Greg Jarrett. Welcome back to Breaking News. It's going to be a really interesting guest for the hour. Michelle Livingston is a visionary counselor. On stage with medium James Von Prague. Did anybody smoke, Richard? Yes. I smell tremendous smoke even up here. Was that your father that smoked? My father and my mom. On ABC There's News. There's air, oxygen everywhere. You can't see it, but it's here. Same thing with the spirit realms. So even though it's in a beautiful, invisible realm, I have the capacity to tap into it and actually see them. He says, thanks for the balloons. I have no idea oh, what that is. Do you have your mother's ashes with you? My brother and I had uh, necklaces made um, with her ashes in them, and I just took it off the chain tonight and put it in my pocket because I was curious if it would come up, <laughs> and it did. From the east in Harrisburg, PA, to the west in Hollywood, CA, I'm the people's medium. Livingston. <laughs> Hello, Michelle. Hello. How are you, Tony? I'm wonderful. I mean, I guess I could say we could all be better, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so am I on? <laughs> yes, you are. You are on. Okay. I just see myself in a little place up there, but <laughs> not, not the screen. So I hope people can see me. <laughs> yep, they can see you. Uh, well, first, I want to say thanks for joining me um, tonight or today, wherever you're watching. Tony, my co-host, is in uh, Burbank, California, as you know. I'm here in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, um, east to west. So I wanted to address something tonight. First of all, I want to say, again, all those who are listening and watching, blessings to you. Uh, take a deep breath, everyone which we all need to do right now. Kind of step back and uh, calm down. <laughs> Try to release fear. It's easier said than done in the, the world, you know, the way it is right now. But it's really one day at a time for, for all of us. And prayers go out, my prayers go out to all of you um, and for the whole world um, uh, today or this evening. Be strong and be flexible, be safe, take care of yourselves, send out love and prayers to everyone, and especially prayers of protection. We all need prayers of protection. I picked this subject uh, a couple months ago because people wrote to me and they said, uh, you ask us to send in what we'd like to know about. So uh, they sent me uh, some things about the auric field, the aura. And we have maybe some newbies watching and listening. Uh, we have our regulars, I think. But uh, the art field is an extension of who we are. We have the physical body, which we know about. But we also have an electromagnetic energy field that surrounds our body. Uh, when we are fearful, heaven forbid, when we are down, sad, depressed, the art field can literally shrink into the body, towards the body a few inches in. When we're happy, uh, filled with joy, uh, feel good, in good health, our aura can expand out literally up to about three feet um, in diameter around the body. So we've been told over and over the last few weeks how to protect our bodies from this pandemic. Wash your hands, um, use antiseptic on surfaces, um, blow your nose into a tissue, all these different things to do. But what about what surrounds us? What about the auric field? So, so that is what I'm addressing uh, this evening. Um, it's so interesting that even animals have an auric field. So if you have a pet, there's energy around your pet. Um, insects have an auric field. Any breathing living thing uh, on the earth plane has an aura. And it's interesting because what we think, we know that we attract. 
But our moods affect our auric field. Really, they do. Our feelings, they radiate out into what surrounds us. So <clears throat> you may have visited an expo where there are pieces of equipment that photograph the human aura. And if you have, uh, you'll notice different colors in the auric field. I, I used to do uh, the Mind, Body, Spirit Expo in Philadelphia, and they had the piece of equipment, and my auric field was photographed. There was a lot of white in it, and uh, fuchsia and different colors, so it interested me, because your auric field can change uh, from month to month and from year to year, depending on how you feel, depending on what's going on in your life, and so it's called Curlian photography, and we'll get into that in just a moment. But your arc uh, changes, uh, again, depending on what's happening uh, in your life. Uh, our auras can touch other people's auras. So here we go. We're being told now to distance ourselves from each other and not to shake hands. Well, a year ago, and a few months ago before this was uh, out in the open, uh, just let's say you're in an elevator. Well, it's a very enclosed area. All the auric fields are touching in that environment. So sometimes you may feel in a crowded elevator, I need to get out of here. I can't stand it. Um, I need to get fresh air. It depends who's bringing what <laughs> into that environment and what resides in their auric field. So um, again, we are drawn to certain people that we feel a kinship to. Other people we kind of want to ease away from. And that's because our arc fields are melding together. We only need to be within a few feet of each other to have our fields uh, coincide. So it's really interesting because Curlian photography, you've heard about it, uh, but I wanted to know how it got started and how a piece of equipment is able to actually uh, photograph the human aura. So it's also called electrography. That's what it's called. And it was discovered in 1939 by a Russian electrician of all people. And what's amazing is his name was Semyon Kurlian, and that's why they call that a uh, piece of equipment, the Curlian photographer, photography machine. <laughs> but he and his wife were visiting a hospital and he witnessed a patient being uh, electrically photographed for a treatment. And, and this interested him because of his background. Uh, and that led him and his wife, both of them, to conduct many, many ex experiments because of... Um, the electrical impulses they, that they were getting. So what they did is they photographed a simple plant, which is a living, breathing entity. They cut a leaf off the plant, and when they looked at the photograph, the aura of the leaf was still intact, which amazed them. Now, eventually, of course, it would dissipate, but at that moment, it was still intact. So then they asked to go into a hospital again with this piece of equipment, and a man had been in the war, and he had to have his leg amputated. When they used this piece of equipment, after his leg was amputated, there was still an aura of the limb there, and that took a while to dissipate. So yes, all creatures, humans, animals, insects have an aura arc field. And again, retained in that field are different colors. Now, Tony, do you have um, any pictures of, of the chakra points? Yes, I do. I have Michelle and Heidi. Okay. Is that what you but said? Do, do you have, um, well, let me, let me describe before I do that, oh. the colors of, of the chakras. Okay. And I hope you can hear me. Um, it's, it starts with bright white light at the top of our heads, which is called basically the crown chakra. So when you see white uh, after you've been photographed, it's angelic energy and it's rare to have white. Uh, the next color down is purple, which we'll get into. It's a very high spiritual color. Uh, then we have royal blue at the mouth region, aqua 
is at our throat. Emerald green uh, is at the heart. Yellow is abdomen. Orange is the reproductive. And of course, red is a core color. And that's the base of the spine. And that goes down um, our limbs to, to ground us uh, to the earth. Uh, before I really get in deeply into the colors, I just want to uh, let you know how you can cleanse your aura. Um, fear will, will, again, shrink it. Anxiety, stress will shrink the auric field. So it's up to all of us to keep it, um, to keep it glowing, actually. The first way uh, to cleanse the aura is in the morning uh, with a positive affirmation. So you go to the mirror and you can visualize either an orb of golden light around yourself or pure white light around yourself. And you say, I am now protected and cleansed in the white or golden light and the love of God. I am protected physically, emotionally, and mentally. My auric field is expanded and protected and cleansed in the light. So when you do that, and when things calm down after what we're dealing with and you're at work and you wake up feeling pretty good in the morning and somebody's depressed at work or going through different things, what you're doing unknowingly is you are imbibing their energy. And this can uh, put holes in the arc field that surrounds you. In those holes, which we call gray pockets, uh, negativity resides. So how do you cleanse your auric field? How do you protect your auric field? One way is with a mineral salt soaking bath, which is really interesting. You can take um, a cup or two of Epsom salts and a cup or two of baking soda. You put it in your bath water with some lavender essential oils, or now you can even buy... Uh, lavender Epsom salts, which calms you and relaxes you. Soak for about an hour. Do some deep breathing. Do some meditating. Relax uh, in that mineral spa. And you'll be amazed how well you sleep. You'll be amazed how much lighter you feel. What the uh, baking soda does is it is an alkaline product. And what that means is it will literally draw guck out of your auric field. So we know how to cleanse our bodies through bathing, through showering. But one way to really uh, define and pull out negative energy from the auric field is a, a good warm soaking bath with baking soda and Epsom salts. You can take this to the next level. So you say you want to shower. Take a plastic container and with both ingredients, make a paste with warm water and put it on from your neck down and uh, shower it off. And again, you'll feel lighter, you'll sleep better. So that's one way to cleanse the aura. Another way to cleanse the aura is uh, through smoke, believe it or not. The Native American Indians used this uh, hundreds of years ago. And they, they smudged their aura with sage. Now, white sage is really good. But sage in general uh, is very therapeutic because it's antibacterial, which is amazing. It's antiviral. Sage is antifungal, antioxidant. And white sage also is antimicro. Bile. Let me get it that way. <laughs> Microbile. Uh, so you can get a smudging stick, and many of you have probably done this to cleanse the auric field. You buy a smudging stick of white sage, light it, blow out the flame, and they, there will be aromatic smoke. And what you can do is you can start at the top of your head. You can circle the smoke down your body to the different chakra points. Um, you can put the smoke down your arms, down your legs, and basically what you've done then is you've cleansed the aura. So water's therapeutic, 
therapeutic for the aura. And so is um, sage, smoke. There's something called, um, <laughs> there's an old saying, nature nurtures. And that means when you're out in nature, deep breathing and feeling that nice warm breeze, you're, you're actually cleansing out stress and negativity. So Tony, are you there? <laughs> yes, ma'am, I am. You, you like to do uh, nature walks, you oh, told me. Oh, love it, yes. And I bet you feel a lot calmer. Oh yeah, and it's, happier. It's my and I think uh, it's my meditation. Where most people sit in silence, I walk in nature for my meditation. It's Tony's meditation, and um, if you go on Tony's uh, site, he's photographing the mountains. He's walking in nature trails. It's beautiful, and so uh, even though we're aired in Burbank, where, where do you, you live up? In the mountains, don't you? I live uh, in Tony. Santa Clarita, Valencia, where Magic Six Flags, Ma Magic Mountain. Yeah, we're surrounded when, by. Right now, the you know the mountains are full of snow on the, on top and stuff. It's beautiful. Oh wow! Yeah. Magic Mountain. You call them the Magic Mountains, right? But it makes you feel better because nature does nurture. So the other um, element that helps is sunlight. And so if you feel down, just go out and get some sun on your skin, your fore forearm. And also I find this interesting, walking in the rain is, is very uh, cleansing for a natural actually uh, for the auric field. So all those things help. Uh, what that does is it expands the aura, helps you feel joy, helps you feel happy. Um, it's a beautiful thing. Now, let me get a drink of water. If you're just listening, this is what I'm doing. I hope you're watching now. <laughs> let me get back to um, the chakras and, and what they represent. White is at the top of our head. We have purple, royal blue, turquoise is at the throat, green is at the heart, yellow is the abdomen area, Orange is our reproductive area. And again, red is the base of the spine that uh, goes down our limbs, the color red. So if you've ever had your aura picture taken, now you can figure out what you're dealing with because actually the colors uh, vibrate with your personality. So let's go back here. <laughs> what you wear also goes into your auric field, believe it or not. I'm wearing white, and that is basically the re reflection of all color. It's, it's the mixture of all color. If you take a rainbow and mix all the prisms together, all the colors together, it would be bright white light. And the colors you wear get absorbed into the auric field. So bright jewel tone colors, uh, Emerald green is good to wear, teal, uh, aqua is great to wear, royal blue, purple, and again, white. And my husband has all kinds of polo shirts, but believe it or not, with different colors, aqua, purple, royal blue. And um, <laughs> so men can get into this too. Uh, they can. Uh, studies have been done uh, when a person wears a lot of black or uh, dark colors, navy, gray, or brown. Those colors tend to shrink the auric field closer to the body. Uh, black holds back everything, holds back all color, and uh, it is absorbed around the body. So studies have been done that people, uh, well, people in New York City wear black a lot, people in Paris uh, wear black a lot, seriously. <laughs> But uh, it's a hustle bustle. Both of them are hustle bustle places. But here's, here's the thing. Watch what you're wearing and watch how you feel when you're wearing it. Uh, somebody was admitted to um, an institution for mental problems. And they found out that that person wore red a lot. Red is the color of excitement and passion, but it also is a stimulating color. And it can make you mentally off a little bit. When they switch that person to wearing light blue, the person in a week was able to calm down.
So I find that really fascinating. Remember the colors you wear go into your auric field. Okay, so what do you think your color is? I'm gonna give you a rundown of the positive and the negative of the different colors that I mentioned. White is the rarest. And as I said, it's the blending and reflection of all the colors together. In the auric field, it shows cleanliness, it shows purity, it shows peace, inner peace. And it really is a form of innocence. Babies have been photographed and most of their auras are white. They haven't been in the world very long. They're not stressed. You know, they're not bombarded with negativity. So there, I found that fascinating. Their arc fields are, are mainly white newborns up to about the age of three months, pure white, which is very unusual. And white also denotes a very spiritual person, by the way, somebody that is evolved, somebody that's an old soul. Let's put it that way. And angelic energy is around, as I said, people with white um, in their auric field. And I want to ask, Tony, I want to ask you something. Have you ever had yours photographed? I have. Um, I honestly, I, I it was at the Conscious Life Expo a couple of years ago. Conscious Life Expo. I, is that in LA? Yeah, it's a every February. It's a big expo uh -huh. for spirituality and all that good stuff. But I, I honestly, I don't, I don't remember what it was. But my husband's. Yes. His was solid red. Wow. What is well, that we're going to get into that color, too. Okay, okay. I can't <laughs> it, wait to hear. It's funny you'd say that because when John and I were first married, we had ours um, photographed, and ours were exactly the same. We had fuchsia, a lot of white, and red. Huh. And so red's the color of passion uh, and excitement. And we'll get into that because that's the last color um, that I'm going to talk about. But that's funny. <laughs> but the negative side of white is you, people that have a lot of white tend to be vulnerable. They feel vulnerable. They tend to easily be deceived because remember, they're, they're very spiritual. They, they're very giving. Uh, they can be easily manipulated and abused by other people as well. So if you've ever had your photograph taken, look at it and see where the white is. The next color down is purple. It is really the highest spiritual color and it vibrates with intuition or inner knowing, uh, clairvoyance. Also, it's a very royal, royal color and um, it means the intellect, it's an intellectual color because it vibrates with the third eye up here, which we call the pineal gland. So many readers and people that are clairvoyants use a lot of the third eye, which is, you know, brings in the purple. So by wearing purple, you're opening up your intuition, uh, you're opening up your intellect, and it's the color of grace. Uh, and grace is, is a beautiful thing. So lavender, though, somebody asked me about lavender because there, there are variances of shades here. We can go from red to pink. We can go from purple to lavender. So lavender is the color of romance. And so if, uh, we'll see if anybody calls in that's romantic. <laughs> if you want to call in later on, the, the number is on the screen there. And uh, Tony will uh, look at the calls and he'll pick a couple. And you can get through. And I, all I need to do is hear your voice, tell you a little bit about yourself, and, um, and what the color is in your arc field right now. The negative side of purple is moodiness. And they tend to be argumentative and a little bit pompous, since it's a royal color. Uh, so that's, I thought that juxtaposition was really interesting. The next color down is royal blue. Uh, royal blue is a calming color. It's the color of protection. When Archangel Michael, for example, appears, many times he's surrounded with royal blue because he's the Archangel of protection. So again, it's the color of communication, protection, and calm and peace. So writers, uh, those that are teachers, should wear more blue. It helps to open up lines of communication. 
The downside is sometimes in a blue arc field, the person can be a little bit cold and a little bit emotionally distant. That's the negative side with their emotions. Turquoise, my favorite color. Love it. <laughs> it's the throat chakra. And again, it's very similar to royal blue. A lot of healers wear turquoise. It's still a, a compassionate color. And it has to do, again, with interaction with other people, with communicating with other people. The next color down is emerald green. Beautiful color of green. And different shades of green mean different things. So think of nature the green grass. If you love nature, you'll probably like green. Actually, that was my papa's favorite color. When I was little, I'd always say, what's your favorite color? And he'd say green. And he loved to walk in nature. Green's the color of stability. It's a heart-centered color, uh, the color of love. And people that have green in their auric fields love very, very deeply because it is heart-centered. Healing uh, professionals um, should wear green, whether it's Reiki masters, whether it's hospital workers. And actually, uh, this is interesting too. In hospitals, many times they'll paint the walls light green. And interns that work there will wear light green scrubs. And the reason that is it calms the patients down and it brings them a form of healing which is interesting. So you might say, well, now what's the negative side of green? If green's so wonderful, well, have you ever heard green with envy? <laughs> I have to laugh about this. So it's true. If somebody is envious of what you're doing or you as a personality are a little bit jealous, uh, they can get a little bit green here. This is funny. And green um, in that capacity of negativity produces a toxic personality. So, you know, you've heard of toxic people and to try to clear away and stay away from toxic people, they may even have green on the negative side uh, in their auric field, which is interesting. And I'm getting a little drink of water. Michelle, would you like me to show a... a, a uh, yeah, uh, in about one minute, well, Tony. I was going to show the colors right here. I don't know. I guess you can't see it, but I was showing the colors so that oh. people can follow you. Okay. Well, I was going to, in, in a second, just tell them what, what, all, what they mean. <laughs> yeah. And that's fine because I can't, I can't see them. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, yellow is a positive color. Uh, yellow, it means happiness. It means cheerfulness. It means optimism and uh, joyfulness. The downside of yellow is someone that may be controlling, may want personal power over another person. Because remember, there's two polarities in this world, positive, negative, love and fear, dark and light. So with each positive emotion that we have, there's also a flip side. And that's the way the world is. <laughs> yellow also means uh, imploding because it has to do with the solar plexus. So a lot of people with yellow in their auric fields hold emotions inside themselves. Uh, and that's what I mean when I say uh, they're in a way controlling um, and um, distance themselves from other people. And then we have the color orange. I personally like orange. A lot of people don't like orange. But orange is the color of the reproductive area as we go down the chakras. So orange, of course, would mean creativity. Artists have orange many times in their auric field. Uh, anybody that composes music, it represents new ideas. It represents success. Orange uh, in the aura, uh, those people are driven for success. Uh, it's a sensual color. It's a sensual color, orange is. And um, the color of excitement. So the downside is people with orange take a lot of risks. 
they tend to be impulsive, and they tend to procrastinate. So the opposite of success is what? Procrastination. And these are opposite, again, emotional attributes or traits that someone possesses. Now we're going to get to red. Red, 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 red. That's what I had with my husband and our first uh, curly and photography pictures. I couldn't find them. <laughs> I was trying to find them. It was like 30 years ago. <laughs> Heavens knows what happened to those. But it's the most vibrant color in the whole spectrum. Uh, it represents high energy. It represents passion. Of course, love goes along with passion. It represents being strong-willed and having courage. Red's the color of being able to innately march forward with courage and do things that maybe other people would be intimidated to do. So that's red. And it really represents the whole life force. Think about our bloodstream. Think about blood being red. The downside of having red in your aura field, as I said, is you can become overly excited and overly mentally stimulated and also high blood pressure. It has to do with the bloodstream. So the downside of red is what? Being angry, seeing red. Uh, one time, and it, it's a personal thing that happened, I actually looked at someone and saw red around them. And I just about passed out. They were very angry <laughs> for a reason. I won't say what the reason is, but there was red there. I saw it. So uh, red can also represent unresolved negative issues. Uh, a girl wrote to me on Facebook the other day and said, um, I'm feeling red. <laughs> I said, well, you're probably angry about something. And uh, she said, yeah, I didn't have a good day. And I said, well, if you happen to call in to my podcast, don't bring a lot of murky red into it. Because <laughs> you're bringing murky uh, uh, negativity. So pull up one of those. Um, pull them up, Tony. I, can't, I wish I could see them. See which one you're pulling up. All right. It's Michelle's. Okay. Oh, okay. Perfect. Uh, I'm not going to mention last names. Um, the people sent me a lot of these and they didn't want me to um, say, say names. But um, I do have to say if Michelle's up, there's a lot of white in that one, isn't there, oh, yes. Tony? There's a lot of, a lot of white. Yeah, there. it's beautiful. So this is what um, Michelle's represents. Um, Pale blue, if I remember correctly, and thank heavens I have this written down, at the top means peace and means calm. Now, is that up full screen, Tony, or is that up split screen? No, it's full screen. Okay, great. So the pale blue at the top represents calm and peace. There's lots of white that surrounds this person's face, and that represents angelic energy that's around her. Uh, the lower left is royal blue, and at that point in her life, she felt protected. Fuchsia is around the face area, and that represents gentleness, gentle love. So this lady wrote to me and said that she had a brain tumor and, of course, was fearful of surgery. She had surgery. Her cancer was healed. And the representation of her aura before surgery and after surgery was amazingly different. Uh, she said that she prayed uh, to God, but she also prayed for the healing angels to surround her. Uh, and this photo, she told me, was taken in Sedona, Arizona on her birthday uh, after she was cancer free. It's a beautiful uh, rendition of someone's auric field. So her name is, is Michelle, first name. Now, we have another one coming up, don't we, yes, Tony? Yes, we do. I'm going to show it right now. All right. So, 
Everybody watch. All right. We're not going to give a name. <laughs> this was a request. Uh, this is someone that was kind enough to send um, a before and after uh, our photograph in. I took the one after because it was so beautiful. And again, the royal blue above this lady's head uh, denotes protection. She's being protected. Fuchsia pink and red on the lower right stands for love, stands for passion, and stands for her courage. Because very similarly to the last photograph that you viewed, this girl uh, had cancer. And after she was cured of it, she was very much relieved. Uh, she believes in the power of prayer and meditation, bless her. And it's funny that both of these ladies, not funny, but interesting, that both had cancer. After they were cancer-free, they felt freedom. They felt loved. They felt like a weight was lifted. They felt courage. And so their, their photographs are similar. This is why I wanted to show them uh, with protection and love and courage to move forward. Uh, so I'm glad they sent those to me. And I think they're beautiful. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little break. I think we had, do we have a video uh, either of my book, which is being shown? Yes, Isn't we, it, have, Tony? we have a book and a seminar video. Okay. So um, whichever one you'd want to show, uh, we can show one of the, the book. You want to do the book? Yeah, we'll do the book. And then at the end, we'll do the seminar. Okay. Sounds right. good to me. All right. Get you on the other side. I'll be here waiting. <laughs> Attract what you want in life. Learn more about your evolutionary soul journey. Gain in-depth knowledge about metaphysical concepts. Start with Messages from Beyond. It's a spiritual guidebook that talks about the soul journey. Everything you've ever wanted to know is in this book. It's Spirituality 101. Messages from Beyond, a spiritual guidebook. Available at michellelivingston.com and wherever right, books are welcome sold. welcome back to Michelle Livingston, the people's medium. Was that shown? We showed it. <laughs> wow, that was quick. <laughs> I feel like I'm in outer space here. Seriously, I can't see myself. I can't see anybody. But hey, we're, we're doing fine, aren't we, Tony? You're doing this a great is live. job. You're doing a great this is job. live, people. <laughs> you are so I hope you can hear me and see what's going on and everything. So I guess uh, we're ready for a couple of phone calls. And... Again, if you're curious what color is in your auric field, I can kind of find that out from your voice and really what you're dealing with now. If you have a question about cleansing the aura, uh, how you, to expand the aura, if you're just tuning in, we went through all of these different ways, you know, let me know. So, um, and you can also leave messages on my um, Facebook page. I don't see them till after the program and I answer every single one of them. If I don't get to them this evening, uh, we're going at eight o'clock here, uh, Eastern time, I'll get to them sometime tomorrow. So anything to add, Tony? No, otherwise uh, that when we pull uh, people in, which we're gonna answer a few calls now, uh, just make sure uh, you have your question ready for Michelle, that way she can get right into it. Uh, yep. Our first uh, call is from a 484 number, and I believe they want to know their color. So let's go ahead and bring them in. Okay. Hello. Hi, Michelle. It's Joanne Lacari. How are you? Well, I'm doing fine, Joanne. And, and where are you calling from? I'm calling from Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Oh, well, it's so nice to talk to you, my dear. Uh, yeah. I can I can tell right now when you hear this that you're optimistic. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, that you always put your best foot forward. I don't know you, Joanne, but I'm just saying that I feel that about you. There's a lot of golden yellow in in your auric field, which means oh, wow. again, p pardon. I was just said wow. <laughs> Yeah, and, and what that represents, my dear, is um, uh, light. It represents uh, that you are a joy bringer to other people, 
that you are, are an optimistic, positive type of person. And I, I have to say, you always put your best foot forward, Joanne. I like that about you. Now, remember, I, I'm going to talk slow because we are on a delay and I tend to talk fast. And I want you to know that right now, white is also there. So I don't know if you believe in angels. Do you, Joanne? Yeah. Yeah, very much so. And I, you either have called upon them for help recently, yes. or yes. you have, have you? Yes, I have. Okay. Or you have angel figurines around. Because let me tell you something, any image will bring in that higher power. So if you have angel figurines or you're asking angels for help, that pulls their energy down. So as I'm visualizing you, I see the most beautiful golden yellow light and lots of white. And so, my dear, you are surrounded by angels this evening. Uh, <laughs> and, and again, honey, stay in your prayer time because I feel you're a person of faith. I don't know who you are, but when you have those colors, honey, you're a person of faith. <laughs> yes, I am. We talk a lot on Facebook. You do? Well, thank you. Yes, well, then you. tell me how you felt about your aura then, okay? Uh, I will, most definitely, and thank you so much. I appreciate you taking my call. Well, thank you, dear, for, for listening and for calling in and for being interested. God bless you, honey. Absolutely. God bless you. Right back at you. Thank you. Um, oh, that's wow. nice. That was nice. All right, yeah. we're going to take another call from a 614. Again, I believe they want to talk about what their color is. All right, you're live with Michelle. Hello, turn your volume down. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Hi, Michelle. Hello. Who is Hello? this? M my name is Tyler. Tyler. And where are you calling from, Tyler? I'm calling from Gahanna, Ohio. Ohio. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when I hear your voice, Tyler, you like things just so in your life. And you're driven not so much to succeed, but to step forward to help people. Uh, you've gone through a lot emotionally, Tyler, in your life. But you've come out shining. So I have to say there are different shades of blue in your auric field, okay? Uh, there's a brighter blue in your auric field, which deals with protection for you, Tyler. Uh, when I say that, uh, you have, there's a lot of prayers. People are praying for you. I want you to know that, whether it's relatives uh, you have courage, Tyler, to pull yourself away from things that may not be for your highest good, if that makes sense to you. Do you understand what's being said? Yeah. You have, you, yes, you've struggled with certain issues emotionally and, and maybe even some substance issues. I don't know. But you've been given courage to pull away from that. And with that is the beautiful shade of bright blue. Uh, also, there's another shade of blue coming in, which is a lighter shade of blue, more of a turquoise blue. You like to talk, and you like to talk to people. And that has to do with communication. So you are uh, somewhat of a communicator as well. Uh, that is a fantastic uh, auric field, Tyler. You should awesome. be happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> Do yeah, you have any, like communicating you, with people and helping people through their, their problems or being there for people. Absolutely. And getting to know them and communicating with them. And you yourself have that courage from what you've dealt with in the past. You understand what's being said? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So I want to thank you, sir, from calling from Ohio. I want to say God bless you. And uh, my prayers are with you tonight, Tyler. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. 
All right. You want to take another call? Well, absolutely. Well, absolutely. I love hearing that. All right. Let's see. Let's do a 717. Uh, again, they want to know their color. So you're live with Michelle Livingston. Hello. Hello. And who am I talking to? This is Debbie. Hi, Debbie. Hi. You sound you sound uh, optimistic tonight, my darling. Uh, sometimes. <laughs> I want to say uh, there's some green here, some beautiful shades of green, emerald green, Deb. Okay. Uh, you have a healing energy about you. It does not necessarily mean you're a nurse or a Reiki master. It doesn't mean that, but you're heart-centered. And uh, if you've been listening to my breakdown of colors, I want to say that you have a loyalty about you with the people that you love, Deb. Yeah. So once you love someone or befriend someone, you don't turn your back on them. You're very loyal. Right. And that designates heart-centered love. So you might like nature, getting out and getting fresh air, and you might like healing other people. And I think, uh, Deb, this is on the emotional level more than it would be even a physical level. You're more of an emotional healer. You want peace, right? You want everyone to be peaceful. <laughs> Isn't that okay. true? You do not like conflict or agitation, Debbie. No. You try to veer away from that, right? Yes. And so therefore, what shines the brightest in your field is gorgeous emerald green uh, and like a grass green, darling. So get out, walk in nature, wear more green. We just had St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know if you're more green, but you need to. You need to wear more green because that'll enhance your emotional uh, healing abilities, darling. Okay? Okay. Sound good? Yep. Thank you. Bless you, honey. Good night. Bless you. Good night. Oh, oh, wow. All these different colors. I love this. The colors, all the colors of the rainbow. Well, this is the first time I've done this, but I uh, love the colors. And, and right away when I hear their voice, I you know can kind of get a vibe from them. That's so amazing. It's kind you, of fun. Yeah, that's amazing how you do that. That's crazy to be able to see all that. Uh, oh, I'm an artist too. That helps. <laughs> that, that is true. That is true. All right. Let's see. Uh, let's do a 215. 215. They want to know their colors. All righty. All right. You're live on air with Michelle. Hi. Hello, what's your name? My name is Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. How are you, honey? Good, good. How are you? I'm doing I'm doing wonderfully well through all of this uh, that we're going through. <laughs> all this craziness, right. <laughs> all this craziness. Um, I have to ask you something. Uh, um, are you married? I am. There's a lot of pink in your auric field and red on fuchsia. And I think it has to do with um, love for your husband and seriously love for other people, darling. Uh, there's, you have a, a deep capacity to love children and, and, and to love your spouse. And this sounds interesting, but you've helped your spouse a lot, more than you'll ever know. It's Cheryl, correct? Your name is Cheryl? Correct. Yeah, you've helped your spouse more than you'll ever know. Uh, through, okay. your, uh, through your compassion, uh, through your patience, uh, pink is also a very gentle color. So you have some fuchsia in your auric field. How do you feel about children, Cheryl? Love them. I thought so. 
whether they're grandchildren, whether they're your own children, but it even extends out from that. I think you love all children. And that is shown yeah. very specific. Isn't that true? It is true, yes. I wish I could add more. <laughs> I, yeah, and the probably more grandchildren. But above and beyond that, Cheryl, it's a love for the underprivileged, a love for children. Mm -hmm. And you really do have that. So again, there's some white uh, in the auric field, which is some angelic energy. Some uh, red, which is passion for your husband. Mm -hmm. And also mm -hmm. some pink fuchsia. And that's the love that you have for children. All right, dear Cheryl. Great. Thank you so much. You have a wonderful evening. Take care now. You too. <laughs> bye bye. Oh. What do we have? Are you there, Tony? I I, I am. <laughs> you are funny tonight or I today. Am, I am. Uh, let's see. Let's do another one. I think we have tons of people wanting to know their colors. How about we do a six one zero six one? Okay. Zero. Go ahead. You're live on the air with Michelle Livingston. Six one zero. Hi. Hello, darling. What's your name? Hi. This is Judy. How are you, Michelle? I am absolutely fine, Judy. Miss Judy. That's great. Uh, <laughs> Oh, my. Um, I do have to say there's a gentleness about you. As soon, okay. as, I heard, as, soon as I heard your voice. The gentle, you, you have lavender, darling. You have some lavender in your uh, okay. art field. And that denotes gentle love. Uh, and somewhat a little bit romantic there, too. <laughs> so lavender is lovely. You have some pink and fuchsia for uh, the love for other people. I'm sure you love your family then, too. Very much. That's what that shows. And um, I do have to say, along with gentleness, uh, Judy, there's a loyalty here. Uh, as, as I said with another caller, and I mean really strong loyalty. I think you would lay down your life if you have children for them. Yep. <laughs> and lay down and That's la true. And lay down your life probably if you have grandchildren for them. Uh, and that's compassion, darling. It's a lot of compassion. You don't turn your back on people. Uh, and there's just a little touch of gold, which is beautiful. And and gold again is op optimism. It's it's joy. So you're a proverbial joy bringer. Uh, what oh, I want that's you, nice. What I want you to watch for are hummingbirds, uh, Judy. Please. You know, I saw, I saw a cardinal out on my deck yesterday, and I went to take a picture, but I opened the door and it flew off, and I was just like, oh, darn. And then I saw it again this morning. But I, I just didn't get it in time to take it. Well, many, picture. many times they are messengers. Uh, they, they are not the loved one from heaven, but the loved one influences them to come. But I'm talking about this summer. I want you to watch for images of hummingbirds or get a little hummingbird feeder because they vibrate with your energy. They are joy bringers. And you're quite wow. the joy bringer, Miss Judy the joy bringer you are the joy bringer yes you are and so well, are, um, so are um hummingbirds okay that's okay. what they're called Thank you. yeah so uh you have a little animal or bird totem and i know you like cardinals but i mark these words hummingbirds all right my darling okay michelle thank you so much it's a pleasure Take speaking with you Take care of yourself. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. She sounded like a very pleasant soul there. Doesn't she sound gentle and just lovely? I know. I love it. I love it. I know. Hey, why don't you take one of these, Tony? You can do it. <laughs> I, I will, I'll let that 
a, a professional do it. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> do we have time for one more? Uh, yeah, we can do one more. Let's do it. All right. Let's see. Um, let's see. How about uh, 717? Let's go ahead and do that. Here we go. You're live with Michelle. Hello. Hello, Michelle. Who is this? What's your name? D. D. My name is D. D E E. Yes. Okay, my dearest. Right away, royal purple. Right. I don't know if you like the color purple, D, but you'll have a lot of it in your auric field. Okay. And purple is loyalty, it's intelligence, it's a very high spiritual color. And I want to say you're somewhat intuitive. You are intuitive, are you not? A little bit. You get vibes about things. Yes. You get feel you get feelings about things. Uh huh. So inter in, in, intuition means inner knowing, my dear. Uh huh. Also, uh, I don't know. Do you like angels, D? Oh my word, I do. Absolutely. Because I'm sitting again, in a room right you, now filled with them. You you're filled with them. Yeah, I'm sitting in my in my living room and I have them all over. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Well, there's some white as well in your uh, auric field, which again, brings in angelic energy. That's why I wanted you to confirm if you, if you have angel figurines or, uh, and so you've called upon them many times for help. Uh, yes, and, I um, you have such a glowing arc field. So know, my dear D, that you are quite intuitive. You're very well balanced. Uh, you love intensely. And um, angels surround you, precious. Angels surround you, you Miss D. Okay. Hey, Michelle. S Michelle. Yes. I have to go, sweetheart. I love, I love you and you know me very well. I do? Yes. Oh, uh, well, listen, I, write to me on Facebook, would you? <laughs> I, I will. I absolutely okay. will. Thank you so much for calling. God bless you tonight, honey. Thank you. Bye-bye, honey. Bye. All right. So if you have a question, uh, send me, send it to me on my fan page. It's Michelle Livingston, comma, the people's medium, or on my friend page. And I'll be glad to answer. So I want to wish you all a, a good evening. And I have some closing words if we have time, Tony. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> it's about what the globe, uh, what the world is dealing with. And um, after a, I was meditating yesterday, excuse me, this is what came through. And I want to end with these words. In these times of fear, know that God's pendulum always swings back patience is key and faith and hope will make our future brighter so i want to say bless all of you thank you for watching and listening i'll be on again and uh take one day at a time you're all in my prayers. Good night, Tony. God bless in California. Good night, my dear. Take care of yourself and everybody out. Be safe. Be safe. Bye-bye. If you enjoy the Michelle Livingston Show and want to see her in person, check out her next live seminar. So here we go. If you can work with me, close your eyes. We're going to take eight deep breaths, and we're going to start. Have you recently lost a loved one? Who lost a, a, a husband recently? Or, or, I have to take a deep breath with him. I feel it was fairly quick. Could you be the next one to get a reading? I think I'm with you, sweetie. There's a name like Bree. Uh, Bree. They're showing me cheese. My daughter. That's the new one. They showed me Bree cheese and her daughter's name Bree. See how this works? This seminar will provide an experience that will truly enhance your understanding of the other dimensions. When we get over there, we train to help one or two people that are on the earth plane and we train to be their guides or their helpers. 
and confirm that you... There's a dad figure coming through here. ...are never alone. Did you enjoy it?